Hey, welcome to On Books. This is Chris here. Today's book is The Artist's Way by Julia Cameron. And uh, we're going to go through it together, you and me. I'm going to give you the gist of the book, the big, uh, the big meat, the big takeaways, the big kind of the stuff that you can listen to this podcast. And if you've never read the book, feel like after this, you'll be able to apply it, uh, whether you choose to read the book or not. There's just some basic takeaways that you could start applying in your life. So I'm going to go over those right up at the front. And then I'm going to go through my experience. You know, it's this 12 step. uh, (laughs) It's this 12 week program. It's not quite AA. AA is like 12 step. uh, But this is 12 week. Side note. You know, like AA has 12 steps. I just realized that there's this bar, you know, as I was like thinking about turning on the mic to do this, I was like, 12. 12 steps. I always call it 12 steps uh, in this book, but it's 12 weeks. But 12 steps, the AA thing, is there's a bar called the 13th step a few blocks from where I'm recording this in New York City. And that is a not nice joke for people who are trying their best to stay sober in the new year. So, But uh, all good. So here we go. The Artist's Way. Uh, we are going to just dive right into the main gist of the book. So it's like, imagine you and me, we're sitting here, I'm drinking some bourbon. I'm going to take a sip right now. Mmm. Ah, feeling good. And uh, you're chilling. Hopefully you're having a beverage or you're, you're taking some time. And I'm just going to just gonna give you the gist right into your ear here. Just get ready. Okay. Here's all you need to know. Like I said, there's 12 weeks weeks, there's 12 weeks, and each week of the book, each week as you follow along, you get little assignments. So this book is a lot more about doing than uh, than just reading. Um, the two main takeaways that you do throughout the entire book is something called the morning pages and then something called the artist's date. Those are like the two... Um, consistent things and like the real big takeaways from the book. Uh, She calls them, uh, she calls them the basic tools. So I'll even read a little bit here. She says, it starts off the book. She says, there are two pivotal tools in creating recovery. So recovery from being not an artist or feeling like you're not an artist to becoming your, getting back to your creative self. So blah, blah, blah. So the morning pages and the artist state. That's what I said. So that's that's it. And she says, uh, a lasting creative awakening requires the consistent use of both. I like to introduce them both immediately and at sufficient length to almost to answer most of your questions. The chapter here explains these tools carefully and in depth. Please read it with special care and begin the immediate use of both tools. It it reads. It's a little bit uh, a little little kind of fluffy and uh, a drama school feeling at times, but I like it. I like, I like, I like where she goes with it. She seems um, very encouraging throughout. Um, And I'm going to explain to you what these two basic tools are that I just set up there. So the first one, the morning pages, here's the morning pages. And you can do this if you like it right immediately after the morning pages. All you have to do is when you wake up every morning, right? That's what the morning pages are. And I find that to be the most important takeaway of the entire book is just this concept of waking up every morning and write. Now, you don't need I look here. This is my interpretation. You don't actually need to do it in the morning. You can do it whenever you want in the day. Um, I've tried it a bunch of different ways. I, I completed the book about two or three years ago now um, in New Year's. I started right at the beginning of the year. And uh, yeah, I I think, you know, find time to do it. Why the morning? The morning because it's it's, I find that it's the easiest time to not make excuses to just wake up a little earlier or to just schedule some time as soon as you get to work or right before work, whatever you can do and find whatever it takes. 15 minutes. All you have to do and all she's suggesting you do is write about two and a half pages. That's the assignment. Right, two and a half pages. Now you're thinking, what do I have to write? You know, what what are we doing here? So it's a stream of consciousness. This is what she's suggesting you write. Um, stream of consciousness. Uh, she says it could be something like, 
Yeah, I did my laundry yesterday, blah, blah, blah. They may also just be a brain drain. There's no wrong way to do the morning pages. So so that's pretty much what it is. It's just waking up every morning and just writing two and a half pages. Um, it comes to about 750 words. And there's even a website out there. Um, it's called 750words.com, which I would plug. I think it's pretty great. I think it costs a bit of money to use because it keeps track it keeps you on a streak so that you don't miss doing one of these. So that if you miss a day, it lets you know. Um, but you don't you don't need that. You you know it's cool, but but you could just start um, just writing in Evernote or writing in a Word doc or writing an email wherever you like to write and just write. And uh, what I find happens is for me it was cool because writing every day, uh, even though I was kind of just writing drivel, and I'll, I'm going to read you a few of my writings at the end of at the end of this once I give the highlights but writing every day it just started to free up in my mind this thought oh I can do this I can make time to write so it's like a muscle in my brain or with my hands or with my schedule something started to flex and as silly as it sounds just starting writing I don't know anything from like why am I waking up so early to write this to like I don't know, improv rap lyrics that I would just kind of like start rhyming with a rhyming dictionary. Um, it doesn't matter. It's just the the goal, the kind of the kind of wax on, wax off is that you are just finding time to write. And then as you go through the weeks, this starts to take more shape. And so I really dig that. And uh, and I do that even even nowadays. I would say this podcast in a way is like my morning pages, um, just showing up to do something to talk about a book that I love each week. Uh, it just keeps things consistent. It just keeps things fluid and moving and it builds each week. Um, rather than if it was, you know, uh, you know, trying to write some Magnus opus and um, I didn't say that right, but you know what I mean? In like one big weekend or it's just doing a little bit each week and getting better and better. So that's the morning pages. Love it. The other tool, which I mentioned, is called the Artist Date. And she suggests you do the Artist Date once a week. So, again, the morning pages is every single day, two and a half pages. The Artist Date is once a week. And the Artist Date, what that is, is it's basically you just having like time by yourself. I don't know how to say it. Spend time in solitude with your artist child. It's essential to self-nurturing, she writes. As I'm reading this, I feel like you're listening and you're like, oh man, I don't I hate this lady already and how she writes. I don't know, maybe am I am I putting those words in your mouth? But I feel like I'm just picking sentences that that out of out of context sound a little bit um a little spiritual and a little a little maybe maybe that's a little a little scary to uh to, to you out there. I don't know. I I think maybe it was to me, so maybe I'm just projecting that on you, the audience. But um but there is something about reading it reading it all together. Um maybe that's why it's in a book and not on a podcast. But uh I'm just trying to to whet your appetite because I, I think there is um something really nice about this artist date. Um this idea of going I'm gonna put it on my own words, going out once a week outside of the patterns of your daily life, right? So if you show up to work every day, you know, let's say 10 to 6 like I do, uh, if you go to the same places, I'm not going to find creativity, you know, because it's like I don't, I become numb to that creativity, so to the things around me. So for me, the artist state uh, was going for a walk, you know, a different way that I would go to work or cooking, um, cooking some food, maybe going bowling or like playing sports, just kind of doing things that are outside of my normal uh, routine, you know, something like that and doing it solo and really just trying to uh, let that moment speak to me and enjoy it. And it's like a little meditation and doing that once a week just to kind of keep it just kept my brain fresh and uh, excited, and uh, it was a cool, cool experiment. So that's that. That's those two things there. All 
All right. So once you get past the two tools, the the morning pages and the artist date, then you dive into the 12 weeks. And throughout these 12 weeks, uh, the margins are lined with quotes. I want to say there's at least one or two quotes on every single page. So it's very inspirational. Some of the some of the quotes that jumped out to me. I love this Aristotle quote, this we are what we do repeatedly. Excellence then is not an act, but a habit. Oh, so good. So good. I'll say it twice. Ready? We are what we do repeatedly. Excellence then is not an act, but a habit. Another quote that I like, if I could find it in here. Ah, I'd rather have roses on my table than diamonds on my neck. I'd rather have roses on my table than diamonds on my neck by Emma Goldman. Um, just this idea of showing up every day instead of having diamonds and <laughs> peace <laughs> like that. Uh, so, so this is the tone of the book. There's lots of, uh, there's lots of nice quotes like this uh, lining the pages and there's some assignments that you do. So I'm going to share some of the assignments. If any of these catch your fancy, <laughs> catch your drift, catch your vibe, catch your day, something you want to hold on to, uh, feel free to take, to take it and do it afterwards. So, um, the kinds of assignments that you could look forward to if you were to take on this challenge, uh, you do a few a week. She gives you something like, I don't know, eight or something a week, like all these challenges. She says, do, she says, do about half of them. She's like, you don't have to do all of them, but do about half of them. I would say for me, took at least in addition to the morning pages and the artist state, which we already talked about, I'd say it took at least an hour at the end of every week to do the assignments. So that's kind of what you're looking at if you jump into this book. So some of the assignments are list three champions of my creativity and why. So three champions, these are people, you know, in the past that really helped me become creative. I wrote down my friend Mike Moore, who he was always really excited because I could play the song Eruption on guitar and he would be like, hey, look at, look at Chris. And he would show off. He would like show me off almost. He was my roommate in college. He'd be like, hey, check this out. And yeah, that felt pretty good. It feels like maybe there was a time that I was, you know, talented and can do that. And, uh, you know, write, writing this down and the act of that is a way to remind myself or, or for you, you know, deep inside yourself, like who is your champion of creativity? What's a time when you thought someone stood for you as being creative? And it's good to think about. It's good to write down, especially right now. I mean, even going into this podcast tonight and, and sitting up here, I was a little bit like, oh, it's always hard to get the first word out. Now, now I'm fine. Now I feel, you know, now, now the bourbon's the bourbon's chilling with me. But yeah, sometimes you need a little confidence. And, and that's what this assignment did. It was, it was nice. And I wrote, wrote a few more down. All right, all right. Let me uh, share with you one or two more exercises uh, to get your to get your brain ticking. This one I like is called the I wish exercise. And in the I wish exercise, you just have to write about twenty lines. I wish, I wish, I wish, and what you wish. Ah, okay, okay. Uh, she writes one of the best ways to evade our censor is to use speed writing. So the censor, that's something she brings up uh, earlier in the book. This is a cool idea. This is, this is a good one because you have it. I know you do. We all have the censor. We're all victims of this voice in our head, right? This nasty internal little, this like critic that's in there who's like, Chris, Chris, you're not, you're not doing good. You call, you call that writing? You're a joke. Ah. My censor just sounds like a dick. Yeah. Uh, my sensor knows that I'm not good at spelling and will make make that a note and will make me feel bad about my writing. My sensor says, who gives you the right to be creative, right? So you get the point. It's, the, it's this voice in your head. And what Julia Cameron is trying to do with the artist's, uh, the artist's way and with all these exercises is getting stuff out of your head quicker so that you can write, so that you can express yourself and be your full, like be at your full creative potential. Cause you know, you have that in you, you know, you know, you're like, yeah, I could do that. I could, 
I could start a company. I could, I could write more. I could be an actor. I could do that creative thing. I know. You, you've thought of it before. You thought, maybe if I, and then you start making excuses. Maybe if I moved to New York. Maybe if I was a little bit taller. Maybe if I was a baller, right? <laughs> Whatever it is, you write, we could write whole songs about your censor in your head. Ah, it's been done. So that's what the sensor is, and that's what this exercise is by just writing I wish. You know, if you just had to write I wish as quick as you could, what would you write? Well, I'll let you do that. I have my notes here from about three years ago. I'll just read them out quickly. Probably some of these are going to be embarrassing. I wish that I loved people more. I wish that I could write better. I wish that I had a bigger apartment. That one still hasn't happened. I wish that I had more friends. That one happened. I feel pretty good about that one. I wish that I had better connections with the friends that I already have. Uh, I wish that I could wake up with a girl. I wish that I had an endless supply of love. I wish that I was better at guitar, better at piano. I wish that I could meditate every day. I wish that I took improv. and I did that one. I took improv. Whew. I don't know why those are so tough to read. Uh, yeah, so those are those are some of my wishes. Those are, that's what's up. That's my things. And and you can do that. And I think it's it's in the process of doing it. And it's kind of fun now for me to look back, actually, and see what has changed. I have all these these notes here in my Evernote. So that's pretty cool. All right. Uh, I'll give you one more example of something. Oh, sometimes you – oh, I like this one. This was a fun assignment. One week, you have to write down everything you spend money on. Uh, this was fun because I just didn't realize, I just never think about, you know, well, here here we go. So Wednesday, February 12th, 2014, 11 a.m. I spent 250 on a coffee at the Bean. Minutes after that, I spent $150 on therapy. <laughs> Whoa, that's like I could have went to therapy 75 times or got coffee 75 times. But I talk to someone instead. That is an expensive day because of that chatting. <sighs> 2 p.m. Have lunch with Christina. We split the bill. It costs 19 bucks. 8 p.m. Go on a date with Julia. Caravan of Dreams. 60 bucks. Guess I paid for that one. <laughs> so you kind of see what, what happens there. And it's interesting because at the end of the week, I don't know. I started to notice patterns of, you know, certain days like like that one. Holy God, you must think I'm Mr. Moneybags because that day I spent like three hundred dollars or something, two fifty. Um, but then there's other days uh, down here. Uh, Tuesday, February 18th. I spent nothing. I spent nothing. I must say ate food at work. That must have been work free lunch day. Uh, or I grubbed off my friends, or I didn't leave the house, not really sure. But it is interesting to see how you spend your time in terms of the metric of moolah, moolah money, 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 money. So uh, I will encourage you. Uh, I really did like this book. I, I enjoyed reading it. Um, there is a lot of, uh, there actually is a lot of good tips and stuff along the way. It's not just exercises, you know, now that, now that I'm going back through it. And when I did it, I had an accountability group, which helped a lot. We made a Facebook group and uh, there was, oh man, maybe 10 of us. I didn't even know everybody in the group at the time, but I uh, put together a group of 10 friends. If you want to do that, or if you go ahead and do that, add me to it. I would I would love to uh, to know I'm facebook.com forward slash Castiglione. That's a long name, C-A-S-C-I-G-L-I-O-N-E. Um, but add me to it. I would love to see and uh, see what you guys are writing and, and making, but, uh, but that's a good way. And, and just doing the morning pages is it, that's really worth it. And, you know, maybe your thing's not writing. Like, you could take this in any way. Maybe your thing is uh, doing yoga every morning. I think it's just committing to something. Maybe it's making a podcast. It's doing a little bit every day. That's what this book's about.
right. So that's another episode of On Books. Uh, now, look, I uh, I went ahead and I made a little email address for the podcast. So you can email me now if you have requests or you want to tell me uh, what you're thinking, how I can make this podcast better, uh, whatever's on your mind. You want to pitch something to me? It's chris at on-books.com. That's chris at on-books.com. Uh, that website, on-books.com, that's where I put the show notes, links, a bunch of other stuff. All the episodes that came before this, uh, books like Letters to a Young Poet, uh, The First 20 Hours, Sex at Dawn, Mating in Captivity, Thinking Fast and Slow, etc., etc. There's a bunch of books up there. There's a lot more to come. Um, let me know what you like. And uh, I'm also on Twitter. I'm at onbookshow and facebook.com forward slash onbookshow. I'll be putting all the updates as they become available. Uh, yeah, hope you dug it. Artist way. Get writing. If you create anything, also send it to me. Go get creative. Go now. Bye. <laughs>